Welcome to this tutorial. I'm Andrew Morgan and I'm going to step you through using MySQL Cluster Manager, which is part of the MySQL Cluster Carrier Grade Edition. I'm not going to explain everything about MySQL Cluster itself. Please take a look at this demo video to understand more. So this is what we are going to look at. We're going to have four machines denoted by the different colored boxes and on there we're going to install MySQL Cluster Manager. We're then going to uh, actually define what the cluster should look like, start up the processes, run some operations on it such as a backup, a software upgrade and then finally we're going to extend that cluster scaling out by adding some extra hosts and some extra nodes or processes running on those hosts and you do that when you need more capacity or some extra performance. The first step is to install the cluster manager itself, so we download the file from edelivery.oracle.com and then unzip it. And then once it's unzipped, we'll then extract the contents of the tarball. You need to run this on each of the hosts that are going to form part of the cluster, and then when those processes are running, which we'll see in a second, that's MySQL cluster manager running. There's no central server, it's just made up of an agent running on each one of the hosts. And once everything's been extracted, we'll just rename the directory to save ourselves some typing later on. Okay, so the first cluster we're going to run is a very simple one with everything running on a single host. And to do that, we use the bootstrap option with the MySQL Cluster Manager daemon. So it's just mtmd minus minus bootstrap. This will create a cluster running on a single host, but there's going to be multiple nodes or processes. So once the cluster has started, we get this message. So let's just run that daemon in the background and connect to MySQL Cluster Manager itself. And we do that using the mcm command. So now we use the show status command and we use the minus r and that shows us the status of the cluster that's been bootstrapped. So we've got two data nodes, two MySQL servers and a management node all running on the uh, local machine. So we can create a more complex cluster. Let's stop the processes in this one. So we use the stop cluster command for that and providing the uh, name of the cluster, which is my cluster. And that's just what Bootstrap uses as the default cluster name. OK, the cluster's been stopped. So now we delete that cluster, again giving the my cluster as the name. And then we'll see what packages are in a second, but to clean up nicely, we'll delete the package, which was called my package. And after that, we'll also uh, delete the site where the site was a single um, uh, machine and the site was called my site. Again, we'll see in a second a bit more about setting up sites. And then finally, we stop the MySQL cluster manager daemon itself and quit out. Now let's create that more interesting cluster that's going to run across multiple hosts. So again, we need to start the MySQL Cluster Manager, Manager daemon, but this time we don't give the bootstrap option. So the agent is now running on black. Uh, what I'm not showing is I also ran that on the other machines. So we now go back into the mtm command, and from within here, we can start to define the cluster. The first thing we do is create the site, and we use create site and provide the IP addresses of all of the machines that we want to be in our site and we give the site a nice nickname that we can remember and here we call it my site. The packages are us telling MySQL Cluster Manager where to find the cluster binaries. So we're going to create two here using the add package command. The first one is cluster 728 and the second one is 729 and 7.2.9 was actually included with this MySQL Cluster Manager installation. So you can see it's actually within the MCM folder. We then create the cluster we do this using the create cluster command and we give the minus p option followed by the nickname of the package then minus r and the names of the processes and for each one which IP address it should run on and then we give it the nickname my cluster. Now we query the status of all the processes making up that cluster. We can see them all here and see that they're all in the added status. So the next thing we need to do is actually start the cluster and so that's what we do now. So this may take a little while, especially on this system because it's running on some uh, virtual machines. And so we can go to another window and here we're connected to the MCM agent running on a different machine and we can just query the status of the processes and see that slowly all of those processes are being brought up. 
Now the cluster's running, and we can confirm again that all of those processes are running using that show status command. We now list all of the clusters that are running on my site, and we can see we've got just one, which is my cluster, and it's running version 728 of MySQL cluster. We'll now run a backup of the cluster. So we just use the backup cluster command, give the name of the cluster. And there's various options you can give, but this is the simplest one. And so now let's confirm that that backup's actually been done. So list the backups for MySQL cluster. And we can see that we've got one uh, backup that's split across the two data nodes. So the backup ID is the same for each, but each one has a different node ID because they're different data nodes running on different hosts. We're now going to do a software upgrade to show how simple that is. So we're going to use upgrade cluster, tell it the new package, which is 729, and the cluster name, which is my cluster. So again, this may take a little while to run, so we can always just go to another terminal and check the status of the processes. And as you'll see, uh, they're each one by one stopped and then restarted on the new version. So you'll see the package number change from 728 to 729 as the upgrade happens. I've actually edited this a little because the upgrade takes quite a long time running across these uh, four virtual machines. But as you can see, now a bunch of the processes are on 729 and after two and a half minutes the upgrade is completed. And the great thing is that we didn't need to do anything after we issued the upgrade command. We can go off, have a cup of coffee. And as you can see, everything now is running on 729. So now we're going to add some uh, more machines to the cluster. So we use the add hosts command. And again, we give the minus H option and the IP addresses and add them to my site. We're telling MySQL Cluster Manager where to find the 729 uh, cluster package on those new hosts. And we're now going to check the status of the cluster. And as you can see, it's still the same processes we had before. Uh, but when I'm creating the extra processes, I want to set some parameters. So what I want to do is I want to find out what node IDs are going to be used by, by MySQL Cluster Manager when I add the extra nodes. So I can see here that the non-data node processes, the next node ID is going to be 53. So I'm going to add two new MySQL servers, so I know those are going to have IDs 53 and 54. So I use the add process command, and I create new data nodes on the new hosts, but also add MySQL servers onto two of the existing hosts. And I use the minus S option so I can set the port numbers for those new MySQL servers to 3007. And the reason for that is you're obviously not allowed to have two MySQL servers on the same machine using the same port. So I use the set notation to override the defaults of 3006 to new MySQL servers. Again, this takes little time because each of the existing processes or nodes has to be restarted so that it can pick up the configuration change to know that there's going to be these new processes and what machines they're going to run on. So that's now happened in just over three minutes. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the new processes that we've added. So we use the start process with the minus A option to tell it all of the added processes should be started. So you can specify the process IDs yourself if you want, or the shortcut is just to say minus A to say everything that's been added. Like all of the operations we're seeing here, the cluster is still up and running all the way through here. So once those processes have been added, we again check the status of the processes and we see that there's four new processes, two new data nodes and two new MySQL servers. And we can also see that the two new data nodes have been added to a new node group with a node group ID of one. We check the port numbers, so we can see all the port numbers that we've overridden, and those add two new MySQLD or MySQL servers are in there, and they've got values of 3007. And then just to show you an extra option for the get command, we can include the minus D option, and again, say the port is the parameter name, the scope is all MySQLDs, and it's in my, uh, my cluster. And here you'll see that even the default values are displayed. Now we're just going to shut down our machines so we can stop the cluster itself. So we wait for the cluster processes to stop. And just to confirm, use the show status command one last time to check that all of the processes are in the stop state. We confirm that. So now we can stop MySQL Cluster Manager or the agents uh, using the stop agents command. And we just give it the nickname of the site, my site. And now everything has been correctly shut down.
Thanks again for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you'd like to go to edelivery.oracle.com, then select MySQL and then MySQL Cluster Manager, download it and give it a try for yourself. Thank you very much.